Hello there and welcome to part 5 of this tutorial series in which you're finally going to scrape some tweets. Now as the title of the video suggests, we will be using a Twitter profile to scrape the tweets. Um, and as an example, I decided to choose the Twitter profile of Elon Musk as there are over 14,000 tweets. But I would like to cover, so first of all, the easiest way to scrape tweets, but also what can go wrong. And also what you can do with the scraped tweets. So normally every tweet the data that you can access if you're using it from, let's say Twitter from your phone or on browser. Um, basically, you have the information on who posted the tweet, the tweet content, you have the time. So when was the tweet posted, the number of retweets. So actually all of this information you can extract using the Twitter API. But of course, you need to have a certain objective in mind. So what is it that you would like to do? If you had, for example, all the timestamps for all the tweets of Elon Musk, maybe you would like to see at what time of day he posts more often. Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Or maybe in the evening? Or maybe there is no pattern to be found. Or maybe you would like to analyze the content. So is it a positive content? Is it negative content? How often is Tesla being mentioned? So we will see how, how that is also possible. So. Let's start and let's see how we can get all this information using our script. So we're going to define a new function, user timeline. And of course, we would only need to supply this username. So once the username is known, then we should be able to scrape all the tweets or as many tweets as we specify. So first timeline, let's have this as an empty list and we're going to append either the tweet or the tweet text to it. For every tweet that we have in tweetpy.cursor, now this part I will write first and then explain what it is actually that it does. API.userTimeline screen name equals username and then tweet mode equals extended and then dot items. So what we're doing here is first this tweetpy cursor, what it does is if you take a look at the structure of Twitter, normally there's an ending point to the page. And then once you reach the, the bottom, it refreshes and brings you the tweets that are coming after that. So this part actually solves that issue. It kind of continues with scraping the tweets that are below your first page or below the second page and so on. Then we would like to, of course, access the user timeline and we need to provide a screen name, but that is actually something that we've already provided in our function. So that would be equal to the username. The next part is the tweet mode. We set this to be extended. In, if we want to, for example, scrape the content or the tweet text, because in this case, it would show the full text. If we do not provide this, it would show only the first 140 characters and sometimes that's not sufficient. And then this last part dot items, actually here we can specify how many tweets we would like to scrape. So let's start with 10 and then maybe later on increase it with, uh, with to a different amount. But keep in mind that there is, of course, a Twitter rate limit. So if you get not that many tweets as you specify, then that could be the issue. Um, and if you do not specify anything, basically it should scrape all of the tweets from a user's profile. Now, what we would like to do next is, of course, well, we have the tweets for, we have a for loop, we need to have some action of what should happen to every tweet. So let's first append it to our timeline. We're going to append the full tweet. Let's see what actually we, are being, we, are, we have scraped so far. And then return this timeline. So timeline equal user timeline. And then Elon Musk. So first let's make sure that the length of the timeline is 10. So we have successfully scraped 10 tweets. Then let's take a look at timeline, let's say five. For every tweet, so I chose one at random, there's a lot of information. And this is more or less the same uh, that you can extract from just using Twitter on your own. You can see, of course, when was this tweet posted. You can see the tweet ID. If you want to interact with a tweet, you need this ID, something that we've covered in the previous tutorial. We can see the full text. So you see this text is quite a long one, but it has successfully scraped all of the characters and there's a lot of other information. To be honest, I think a lot of them are useless and you would not find them very useful. For example, um, 
let's see there was some information about the background color if there's a background image I'm not sure if that's something that's uh, very useful but i leave that of course for you to decide i will be focusing on the content so if we want to for example not scrape the timeline and actually the whole all tweets with all these additional information you can also specify here full text what this does is it will only take the full text so again it's always good to check that you have scraped 10 tweets so in this case that is the that is correct let's now print again number five or number six tweet number six and we can see it's a reply so let's take a look and uh, at Elon's profile and see if we can see this reply. So it should be at stool president and no, you do not. That should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, this is the profile. This is the tweet and it, it has been successfully scraped. So at least we can see that this is a, a tweet that actually exists. Now it could be that you would like to focus on analyzing the content and maybe you would like to exclude these replies so let's see how that's possible in the previous tutorial we covered that a reply normally starts with at and then a certain twitter user name um, if you want to exclude that basically once you have the tweet full text you can easily have a simple if statement so if tweet dot full text dot starts with and then if it starts with at then you might want to not do anything. L if tweet full text dot starts with the RT at that maybe you would not want to also include the retweets. And then else if that's not the case, maybe then you would like to add it to this timeline. So if you have a function like this, it would ignore all the replies and retweets. And then you can only focus on the original tweets. So let's actually do something different. Let's have here original tweets or ot let's have a separate list for replies and let's have a separate list for retweets and we're going to add them of course depends on which part it is so this is a re reply replies dot append tweet full text then this is a retweet so retweets dot append tweet full text and then the last part is of course if it's an original tweet or ot ot dot append so here it's all maybe good to add original tweet i mean there are, the replies are also original but in any case let's just make sure that we have a different variable name and then we would like to return not just the timeline but first original tweets replies and retweets and here let's have the same naming so ot replies rts would be equal so these variables would actually be equal to the list that we have already specified in our function that would be returned now although we are now only scraping 10 tweets i always encourage people to check for completeness because it could be that you do not scrape 10 tweets so this length this is something that you can print even here just at least in the testing phase let's say print the length of ot print the length of replies or how many replies have been scraped and print the length of rts let's make sure and let's run this maybe i hope that we run into some issue that we can see so we have 190 which means our original tweet, tweets there's one of them there have been nine replies so out of the last 10 tweets of Elon musk nine have been replies now if we select 50 let's see how that changes we have 13 31 and 6 and now of course we can access whatever we would like to access using our variables or our list so maybe we would like to take a look at ot or the original tweets and then we see all of them maybe we would like to see um if if tesla appears in them so maybe that's also interesting thing to do so how you how would you check if a certain keyword appears in in the tweet full text i'm going to comment this part out because currently we don't really need that but i'll leave it here in case someone is interested in that um actually this part is probably it's just empty list so let's leave them for now what we can do is if say tesla in 
tweet.fulltext.lower. So what we're saying is if the word Tesla appears in the tweet full text, but then lower cased, then what we can do is start with counter being equal to zero. We have zero tweets that contain Tesla at the end, then increase the counter plus equals one. Once you found a tweet, increase the counter, but then also maybe we can just add keyword tweets is empty and then keyword tweets dot append tweet dot full text. So what would happen in this case is if a certain tweet contains Tesla, it would increase our counter and then it would also append it to this keyword tweet. So then we, later on, we can refer only to those tweets and see maybe if they're positive, if they're negative, if there's something special, and if they're maybe too long tweets. Um, is, is Elon maybe explaining stuff? Is he defending the company? So, and then of course we would run this function. It would return, in this case, return keyword tweets. But maybe before that we can print counter. So how many tweets have been found? Um, and at this point we are not checking if 50 tweets have been scraped. So what we can do is we can have keyword counter. So if Tesla has been found, then the keyword counter would increase by one. But let's have just a tweet counter. So how many tweets have we have has Python gone through? If Tesla has been found, then tweet counter plus equals one, which means that we've gone through a tweet. If it has not been found, then again, tweet counter plus equals one. So ideally we would have tweet counter being equal to 50 because that's the number of tweets that we would like to uh, go through and then counter or, or this would be keyword counter would be how many times we have seen a certain keyword appear or how many tweets and then um, since we are returning the keyword tweets would be equal to user timeline Elon Musk Let's see if, if it scrapes 50 tweets or maybe not. So we have eight tweets that have the word Tesla in it and there are, we have scraped 50 tweets. So it's, it's good to always see this because if we scrape, I think if we probably increase the number, we would, see, we would reach some limit. Let's see. So you see now I've specified 150 items, but it only scraped 40. And that's, that's possible because I've just requested too many scrape requests in, in this case, or that, yeah, we, we've reached the limit in a case that, yeah, we would not get all of the 150 tweets. So it's good that we've reached this. Uh, also, that was my goal to show that this is something that you can run into. Um, but for the rest, I think that uh, this is a very easy way that uh, you can scrape tweets. And then once you scrape them, you can in interact with them. You can analyze them. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below if you have any questions as well and we will focus on the next video which would be focusing on this search option because that's i would say that maybe even the most popular um, source of tweets and then the video after that would be focusing on analyzing real-time tweets as that is also interesting so Work with this and see what you can come up with. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.